Everybody right now is talking about Manchester United's off-the-field problems with Jose Mourinho, Ed Woodward, the board, the club, everything that's going on. But no one's talking about the on-field problems that we've got. We saw a dismal performance against Brighton. But what is Manchester United? What is Jose Mourinho's best starting eleven? Gary Neville says that Mourinho doesn't know it. But what do you think it is? Now, before we get started, can you make sure you hit that subscribe button and get involved with United People's TV if you're new to the channel? Lots of United content, but let's get straight into this one. What I want to do here is run through what I think is Manchester United's best starting eleven, not out of the available players, out of the current squad that we've got. There it is right there, and I'm going to explain why I'm playing players in certain positions, why I'm playing that formation, and I want to run through it with you, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, obviously, in goal, David De Gea. It's got to be... One of the best things that United have done in recent years in the transfer market is being able to hold on to David De Gea because having him in goal will save us a lot this season. There's a reason why he's won Player of the Year four out of the last five years. Won it more than Cristiano Ronaldo has won it. And unfortunately, it looks like we're going to be relying on him again. I hope that our centre-back issues were going to be resolved, but it doesn't look like they're going to be resolved very quickly. I thought Bayer and Lindelof were good against Leicester, but they were an abomination against Brighton. But it's not stopping me from putting both of them in what I think is Man United's best starting eleven. I don't want Man United and Jose Mourinho to go back to Jones and Smalling at any point this season unless one of Bay or Lindelof is injured. We need to take this club forward. Smalling and Jones would not take us forward, especially not in the style of football. I want us to be expansive from the back. Playing Smalling on Jones means you're going to have two centre-backs who aren't comfortable playing out from the back with the ball. And it means you're going to get lumped long means you're going to start, start Fellaini more often than not. And I don't want to see Manchester United doing that. So that's why I'm going to start Bayer and Lindelof. But they need to build a partnership together. It's like Rio Vidic, when they were in their pomp, you knew that when one went forward, the other one sat back. When one went for an aggressive header, the other one sat back. Bayer and Lindelof are both a bit of a hothead. And Lindelof is the one that's got to be composed and calm because Bayer, that's part of his natural game. That won't change. And for that to work as a balanced centre-back partnership, Lindelof is going to be the one that needs to become that leader. Does he have the capability of doing that? I thought it was pretty damn good for Sweden during the World Cup. We need to see that at Manchester United. And for me, it's down to, it's down to Lindelof to make that partnership work. Bye is bye. And you know he's a bit of a mad nut job. And I love him for it. When he makes great slice tackles here or there, then he makes bad ones like he did with giving the penalty away against Brighton. He's got to compose himself a bit more in his own game. But they are the two centre-backs I would start. And I would absolutely have Luke Shaw in this team. Scored his first competitive goal in the first game against Leicester. And in the first two games, he's shown me and shown Mourinho that he's still got that hunger and desire to actually play for Manchester United, that he wants to do it. Overlapping runs at left-back. Just having an actual full-back that's doing a modern-day full-back's job makes such a difference to this Manchester United team. When they aren't overlapping, Man United becomes stagnant. There's no width. The passes come back inside to Pogba, who's there on the edge of about 20 yards outside the box. And then he passes just going sideways and sideways. Having Shaw on the overlap changes that. And we've got to use him more often. Uh, and on the right, I'm going to go for Valencia. Now, obviously, you've got Young started there against Brighton. He was poor. Darmian started there against Leicester. Let's not talk about that. Valencia still is the best right back at the club. We haven't seen anything of Diogo Dalot yet, so I don't know whether or not he would be in my best start eleven. But for the moment, I want to see Valencia return. We need a few of the more experienced players. We've been missing Matic, we've been missing Valencia in the first couple of games. And they're two crucial players in this Jose Mourinho starting eleven at the moment, as far as I'm concerned. So Valencia will come back in. And he'll come back in as captain. So I'm interested to see what that will change in Pogba's mindset. Obviously, the papers are going to take... It is a, oh, look, he's taken Pogba off the captaincy. But we all know that Valencia is the club captain at the moment and that Pogba is the vice captain, as far as we can see. Now, midfield, I am going to switch Andreas Pereira for Nemanja Matic. Now, Pereira, for me, was at fault for, I think it was the first goal, was it the second goal against Brighton, when he just controlled the ball. Sometimes when you're in the defensive midfield role, you just got to clear it. you just got to get rid of it. But Pereira is a naturally ball-playing midfielder. He'll always look to turn and face and find a pass. And unfortunately, that was his own undoing because he didn't have enough time to do that. Nemanja Matic is a player who arguably is the most important central midfielder that Manchester United still have. 
At the start of last season when he came in, I was astounded at how good he was and how much he solidified our, def our defence and our midfield. When you've, we've signed Fred and we've got Pogba, we've got two expansive playing central midfielders. Andreas Pereira is a naturally expansive player. I think he's a fantastic squad option to have, but for me, I wouldn't be starting Andreas Pereira for 38 games in his Premier League season as our sole defensive midfielder. Maybe if we were playing a midfield two, and like, like we were doing with Matic and Pogba last season, maybe then I could see more starts for Pereira. But for the time being, I would bring Matic back in as far as my best starting 11 goes. And I'm going to start Pogba and Fred in front of him. Now, Fred, I can see what Fred is going to be as a footballer. And it's very, very exciting because Norm, last season, whenever Manchester United had the ball in midfield, we did nothing unless it went to Pogba. And then you think, go on, Pogba, find a spraying pass, find a cutting through ball. Pogba was the only player capable in that midfield of doing that. Fred is also capable of doing that. Now, given Fred and Pogba's passing was well, both poor against Brighton, but having both of those available in the squad means United have options in midfield. We don't have to rely on Pogba to be the sole creative force in that midfield. And that is why someone like Matic is so important because you can't have three naturally ball-playing central midfielders. You need to have one that's focused on defensive duties, protecting that back, protecting that defence, marshalling the defence and just feeding the ball to Pogba and to Fred. And for me, that is the most balanced midfield three. We've got Matic at the bottom of a, th bottom of a three with Fred and Pogba in front of him. But let me know what you think about that in the comments. Now, left wing. For me, Alexis Sanchez is in that best starting eleven, but I would say left wing is arguably the weakest point we've got in the squad. Only in terms of how the individuals are playing at the moment. On paper, we've got a fantastic squad. We've got Sanchez and Martial both arguing for that spot. But Martial was pretty ineffective against Brighton, given he wasn't given the ball enough, I don't think. But when he did have the ball, I didn't see enough from Martial. I didn't see enough off-the-ball runs from Martial. Or maybe I wasn't watching enough. Let me know what you think about Martial's performance in the comments. But with Luke Shaw overlapping on the left-hand flank, if we can get Sanchez there, who naturally cuts inside, and get that partnership working, for me, it'll be the best partnership we've had since Shaw and Memphis back at the start of Louis van Gaal's reign. That was brilliant. We haven't had a left flank like that. Well, it was only for a couple of months before, obviously, Luke Shaw's injury against PSV. But we need that. And Sanchez really has to step it up this season. First time in nine years he had a summer off and he gets an injury to one week into a season. That makes no sense. But that might just be unlucky. Sanchez is a world-class player. There aren't that many world-class players in this Manchester United squad. Sanchez is one of them. We need to start seeing that. I want to see him scoring 20, 25 goals this season, I think is what we should be expecting from a return from Sanchez. And we just need him to improve his performances, his overall performances. Yes, he's going to lose the ball a lot, but he's that type of player. He'll win the ball back a lot as well. We need Sanchez to lead by example in that attack. And we can't be just relying on Romelu Lukaku to be scoring all the goals this season. Now, Lukaku certainly starts up front. And for me, he's one of the most reliable players in this squad. Again, he had a poor game against Brighton, but so did fucking everybody. And he's so crucial for me in the hold-up play, the build-up play. He's become a far more rounded striker under Jose Mourinho in that last year than in the years previous at Everton. He really did come on leaps and bounds. And for me, he's building himself into a leader. He looks like a leader. He sure, you saw it with Belgium at the World Cup, him bringing in the huddles for the team talks, him speaking to the players. He wasn't the actual captain, but he acted like the captain. And we need Lukaku to lead the line properly this season. And hopefully he will hit 30 goals this season. And on the right flank, I'm going for Jesse Lingard. Now, for me, Jesse Lingard is arguably one of the most important players in this Manchester United eleven because of his movement. Movement is so crucial to any attack. If you're a static attack and you're sitting there, defenders find it very easy to come up, squeeze a space out of you and force you to pass it backwards because you can't turn and run. Lingard's always on the move. So I've got him down as a right wing here, but expect him to float into the middle, expect him to float everywhere. He's always making himself available for his teammate. And it's crucial for me that he starts for Manchester United this season. Where does that leave Marcus Rashford? It leaves Manchester United with a great squad. You look at Man City when they beat Huddersfield 6-1, had Sane on the bench, had Mares on the bench. Kevin De Bruyne wasn't even starting, he's injured. They've got a squad, not starting 11. Manchester United have got a very strong starting 11 and a good bench. 
but their squad's so much better than ours. But that, you can't fit every player and every attacker into the starting eleven. Now, Marcus Rashford, for me, I would probably play him left wing. I like seeing him cut inside from the left rather than on the right-hand side. Up front last season when Lukaku was injured, Rashford didn't do enough. Still not sure whether he's strong enough to be a centre-four for Manchester United. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. But for me, looking at the squad we've got, this is what I would say Manchester United's best starting eleven is. You've got a balanced midfield there with Matic, Popper and Fred. You've got Bayern and Lindelof. They were so shit against Brighton. Individual mistakes from both were culpable for some of our problems. But I don't want to see Man United and Mourinho going backwards to Jones and Smalling. They should be there as squad members only. And that's just the way it is. And if we had signed a new centre-back in the summer, he would be starting for Manchester United right now. But he's not. And Jose Mourinho's got to put belief in the two centre-backs that he's signed. And Sean Valencia, by far and away, are Manchester United's best full-back options. We cannot be starting Ashley Young at left-back this season. He'll do a job at right-back. He'll probably do a job at left-back. But it won't be... It won't help us going forward. He's not a modern-day fullback. I keep repeating that. He'll do a job, but he won't help this Manchester United team move forward. And up front, I'm going to have Sanchez on the left, Lukaku up front, and Lingard on the right. But let me know what you think is Manchester United's best starting eleven. Jose Mourinho's best starting eleven. Gary Neville said that Mourinho still doesn't know what his best starting eleven is, so I want you to let me know what yours is in the comments. As always, subscribe to United People's TV if you're new to the channel. Drop a like on this video. Take it easy.